Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at using colour in Adobe XD. Um, we're going to end up with just simple green boxes, but we'll talk a bit about what's going on in here and kind of different things for Adobe XD in terms of colour. Plus we'll start with one of the shortcuts that I totally forgot to <laughs> show you in the last video. So we'll start with that and then we'll dive into colour. Alright, we're going to start with nothing about colour. We're going to do a shortcut that I kind of forgot earlier on. Um, we remember if you hold down Command on a Mac, Control on a PC and tap 1. Kind of goes to 100% you can see up here. I remember that same key in 2, 200% and who remembers how we see the whole thing? It's a test. That's right, hold the Command key down on a Mac, Control key on a PC and hit 0. Shows me everything. There was one thing that I didn't share with you, that I use loads. Okay, I'm going to pretend like I left it till now, but I just forgot. And so I'm going to click on the name of a document, then hit Command or Control 3. And that kind of puts that one thing that you've got selected into full view. Okay, so that's just another little shortcut I'm going to end up using and you're going to go, how do you do that? There you go, Command or Control 3. All right, so we're in. Let's add some color. So I'm going to click on this. By default, everything is white with a gray border. So what I'm going to do is, well, first of all, I'm going to convince you not to use any colors. But you can see from the intro that we ended up using it. Okay, so when you are dealing with wireframes, it's you want to keep things like color out of the conversation as well. Otherwise, like fonts, if you pick a, a range of colors, you can end up with discussions not about like the functionality of our task flow and how it works, but people picking things like, hey, that's the wrong kind of green for our company, or I don't like red. Is red really communicating right? Like that's a discussion for later on after the wireframes. Keep the wireframes super simple. So I've got it selected. Over here, I'm going to click on this. Now, you've probably used one of these before. If not, you've got your hue slider along here to get your kind of color in the range. Let's say you want blue. You kind of get this little dot in the bluish range. Okay, then you click over here. You can click once, or often I just click and drag it around. Okay, and you can kind of see it adjusting over here. Okay, so this gets your hue correct. And then within this hue, you can pick things like really saturated, super duper blue, okay, or desaturated, which is all the way over here, white, okay, and kind of variations of light, dark, saturated, not saturated, okay, so work within here, get something for your particular one, my advice is, uh, you know, you should use grey, greys are all the way over here, you could be on any hue slider, it doesn't matter, if you've dragged it all the way, and you don't have to get it perfect, right, you can't just, like, getting it there actually has a little bit of the green in it, Okay, but if you drag it past and kind of like I'm holding my mouse key down and just kind of like slams into the side there, then I let go, then it's completely desaturated and it's a gray that I can use along here. If you want full white, click hold and drag it into the top left until you go past where you need to be. Okay, and that's full white. And same with black down there. Actually, black has two spots. Okay, so pick a color, just one. Try not to use more than one. You know, use gray. Gray is the like official no color. But it'd be common to add just one color. It might be the brand color that you're working on, just one. Okay, or, you know, I'm going to pick a color. I'll pick orange. <laughs> it's been way too long picking orange. There you go. That's the color I'm going to pick. That's the end. <laughs> Don't spend ages picking colors. So we've got our color. The other thing is the transparency. This is it, how transparent it is, how see throughiness it is. Okay, and if you want to manually type it in, you can do it down the bottom here. Now, if you are not used to using hue, saturation, and brightness, that's this HSB, you could use the RGB. The actual color is the exact same. Okay, there's nothing different about it. It depends on the last thing you had going. You could use the hexadecimal number. Okay, so if you're a, I don't know, if you are a web developer or a web designer, you might know these colors and be able to work with these better. Or you might be copying and pasting them from a corporate kind of um, spec manual. Okay, so whatever works down here. Um, you can type in your RGB values. Yeah, I end up just dragging this around at this stage. If it's a color you're going to reuse, you probably hit this little plus button because then it stays down here and you can reuse it later on. Okay. Uh, the other one is the eyedropper. Let's use the eyedropper tool properly. So click off, click on this guy and you're like, I don't want it to be white. I want it to use a couple of ways of getting the eyedropper tool. You can go into here, click on this version, and then can you see it kind of zooms it in so you can get quite accurate. It's pretty easy. We've got a big square here, but you can do it that way. You can close it down and go, actually, this just go straight. Cut to the chase. Give me the eyedropper tool. Boom. Okay, and what you might find over time, is I'm going to undo that, is the eye on your keyboard, not the eyedropper as in E-Y-E, -E, the letter I. Okay, if you just type, if you click on this first, okay, so I've got it selected, hit the eye tool, and then click on this. 
Mm, it's a pretty common way of doing things. Lots of ways of doing the exact same thing. <laughs> now before we go, I don't know, XT really wants that <laughs> to be a little bit tucked in there. It keeps defaulting to it. Uh, you can, for the border here, you can click on it, the exact same sort of features. Okay, and you can see there's my reusable thing and uh, color. I could make it green so it matches, or I could probably just turn it off. How to turn the border off? Okay, you could make it completely invisible. That's one way. Probably not the best way is just, just reduce the size to zero. No, that's a bad way as well. Just untick it there. It has no border. You, and I'm gonna do the same for this one here. Now, how do I select two of them at the same time? Ooh, hold down the shift key. So I've got my selection tool. I've got you selected, hold shift, click on this other one. And they're both selected. Now I could say both have no borders. Oh, nice. We'll get into strokes a bit further on and we'll get into fancier uh, color stuff later on. Gradients, yep. And we'll look at color mm, styles and those sorts of things later in the course. But for now, that's the colors 101. And don't use colors, <laughs> maybe just one, but don't let me catch you using two. All right, there'll be trouble. All right, that's it. I will see you in the next video. Hi there, my name is Dan Scott. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to go further with Adobe XD, there is, I have a full course, there'll be a link in the description, it's called Adobe XD Essentials, there'll be a card up here you can click as well, uh, but yeah, carry on with your day, enjoy, and I might see you in the full course.